Hi and welcome to this Cinemagraph Pro tutorial. My name is Jason Teal and today I'm going to show you how to combine uh, still images when using Cinemagraph Pro. And this also helps with a common issue of what I like to call uh, liquid jump. And what that is, is if you've ever worked with liquids, uh, especially during uh, filming of the Cinemagraphs, you'll find that um, the liquid levels will rise. Hey, go figure. Uh, when you start adding more liquid to your cup. Now the problem is is that when you're dealing with a looping video, which is what we're actually doing with the cinemagraph, the trouble is is that you don't want to really show that jump. And, and that's one of the biggest things with uh, people trying to conceptualize what is a cinemagraph and what is just a GIF. Uh, and the biggest thing is, is that when you have a GIF, uh, that jump is quite noticeable because all you're doing is just replaying the same clip over and over again. What you want to achieve with the Cinemagraph is that smooth transition. And you hear a lot of us talk about this infinite loop. And if you look at this clip that I'm showing you now, you can clearly see that I have blended the two uh, video clips, like the start point and the end point, so that they flow almost seamlessly together and you get that infinite loop and it looks quite cool. So how do we achieve this if we've got two different photos? And what I'm talking about is basically uh, during the filming of this um, cinemagraph, my hand was not actually being filmed. It, I was not just standing there holding my uh, coffee cup. Uh, because I didn't want to move the coffee cup at all. And I didn't actually even want to get in the way of my lighting. So how do I add in my hand, which came in later, into this frame to increase that visual tension? Well, here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to export actually two frames. And this is a, an interesting feature that you might not notice about uh, Cinemagraph Pro is that you can actually export different still frames from your clips. And the reason that's cool is for the exact purpose that we're going to use today. So the first thing we're going to do is I like this clip um, because it, you know, we've got the, uh, we've got the basic, the streams flowing, everything is really cool. And I want to sort of keep that element in there. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to export this. Um, I'm going to call it still image. Um, coffee stream because I want to really indicate uh, that there's the streams in there. Okay, export. Now we're going to drop down uh, to the, the little blue bar here where it says drag to choose your still image. And I'm going to drag all the way to the end of my clip, uh, maybe about here. Okay, and you can see right now there's a huge difference uh, in the final image where the coffee level has risen from the addition of the espresso. It's darker, but my hand is there. So I'm going to export this one. Okay, and I'm just going to call it still image hand. HND, all right, whatever. Um, and I'm going to export that. Okay, so now how do we combine them? Let's jump over to Photoshop and I'm going to show you the, the easiest way to combine these. So let's do that now. Okay, so we've got our images loaded up uh, in different layer or different actual panels inside of Photoshop. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is duplicate the layer so that we can get them into the same layers panel. So to do that, I'm going to choose the hand image first because that's the one I really want to go on top. You, of course, you can reorganize these layers, but I just like to keep these simple. So I'm going to take the, the hand layer and then right click and I'm going to go up to duplicate layer and I'm going to go down to where it says destination and choose the image coffee stream. Okay, and then I can just uh, call this hand. Okay. So you can see also here's a tip when you're working with layers and whatnot inside of uh, Photoshop, try and name the image, 
the layers as you uh, import them and duplicate them so you kind of know what's going on. And trust me, if you're ever working with like a huge document, this comes in really handy when you're trying to move stuff around and you're like, you know, the difference is, is that if you have layer one or image one, you don't know which is which. But if you're working with the actual names, oh, I want to move the hand, you know where it's going. So with that being said, I'm going to click OK. And nothing really happens here because I've just duplicated the layer and sent it over. So I'm going to get rid of this. OK. And now you're saying, okay, well, nothing's really changed here. Um, well, we're going to get to that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to make sure that you've selected your hand layer and you're going to click right next to FX. You're going to click the layer mask icon. And then what you need to do is you got to make sure that your foreground layers are set to uh, black. And to do that, just click X and it'll switch them around. So if you click X right now and your foreground is set to black, it'll switch to white. Just click it again and it'll switch to black again. So remember that little shortcut. Anyway, uh, so what we got here is our um, area to be masked. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna quickly brush away um, all the parts that we want to be, to be masked. and. You know, because this was shot on a tripod, as you should do with um, all uh, your cinemagraphs, it makes it quite easy. You you know, you really don't have to worry about the lines or the edges or anything like that. Just make sure that you've got your coffee cup um, all kind of masked out, and you can check that right in your um, um, you know layers panel here. So. Uh, basically that's what we've got okay um, and we can just flatten this or combine the layers okay so just go down to flatten image all right or if you want to use uh, merge visible if you want to use that just hit shift control E but anyway we've got that and now we're going to uh, jump back into Cinemagraph Pro and I'm going to show you how to put this all together so give me two seconds Okay, so we're back in uh, Cinemagraph Pro, and you can see we're still with our old image. So how do we get these all together? So what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, our image, and I'm going to choose one that I've worked on before because I've added uh, some tweaks and stuff like that, but you can still see it's, it's essentially the same thing. And what I want to draw uh, point out to you right now is basically you can see here that this image is quite bright. Uh, versus what we've done in uh, Cinemagraph before. So if you're wondering, are you going to have to um, you know, redo all of your color correction and tweaks and bits and bobs that you've done before uh, once you add this to Cinemagraph Pro? And the answer is bum, ba, ba, no. This is the cool thing about this. You can edit if you go, if you click this icon, um, it'll bring up your um, uh, filters. All of that stays in place, even your mask. So don't worry about, um, you know, importing or exporting or resetting. Everything stays the same. So your mask will stay there. Um, your color correction, your your adjustments. If you go into this uh, icon here, all of your adjustments will stay exactly the same. And this is one of the coolest features about Cinemagraph Pro is because you can yank this out, you can you know do whatever you want to it, and everything still stays the same. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, now that we've got um, our hand in here, and I chose to leave out the um, the streams of uh, espresso simply because. Um, with the uh, loop that I was doing, uh, they sort of jump around and it just sort of didn't look as as um, fluid in my mind. So I just sort of left them out. But anyway, we've got our image. We've got our hand here that creates that sort of uh, visual tension, as I've talked about in previous videos. And we've combined it with our original uh, starting image. It all is sort of... Um, 
come together quite nicely and there's no jumping with the levels of the uh, coffee. You can actually even see the coffee sort of dripping down from the top there and we're good to go. All right. So with that being said, take care. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave a comment in the uh, section below. Thank you very much and have a great weekend.